Hi guys, my name is Ben Guilford. I'm the owner of The Fire Brick Company. And in this video, we're gonna take you through how to finish the stand of your wood-fired oven. We're gonna take you through some tips on tiling, trimming, and rendering the block work that made up your stand. Uh, what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be tiling around the oven. Uh, so we've got this exposed surface, the, the sort of the remainder of the concrete stand is still exposed. We wanna tile that. Um, also the, the side of our concrete slab here and this block work, I want to make all of that disappear as well. Uh, so we're going to be doing some render over that, but we'll talk about some different finishes that you can do there as well. Now guys, basically, I'm not, gonna, I'm not telling you how to do it. Uh, there, you, you have so many ways of, of finishing this, these surfaces off. It's, um, you know, very little limitation on you, but um, I'll show you the, the way we do it, uh, and this is what we do most often. Uh, the other thing I, I might, I want to give you some guidelines around what not to do. Something that I would really suggest not doing is um, timber for a couple of reasons. Firstly, obviously it's you know it's flammable, uh, so if uh, an ember were to make its way out of the oven, and let's say you've done like beautiful timber trim around the front, you have the possibility of creating an unplanned fire uh, near your oven rather than a planned fire inside it. Okay, so that's number one. The, the other thing I, the other reason I don't recommend using timber is from personal experience. I actually used uh, some beautiful, it was a hard sort of a redwood timber as a trim around the border of my, one of my very first ovens. And what I found was, because it was outdoors, it's getting hit by rain and by UV, uh, and it was just almost impossible to keep it looking good. I had to recoat it with uh, like a marine ester pole every six months, um, and even then it was starting to show some pretty serious signs of wear and tear after just like a couple of years. So I really recommend thinking about using materials that are not going to degrade and that basically don't require a whole lot of maintenance uh, because then it's done and you can just leave it. So that's why you'll see a lot of the time uh, we use things like granite, uh, we use you know, porcelain tiles um, uh, rather than materials that are going to need uh, maintenance over time. I, I tend to err on the side of using, using stuff that I just never have to worry about again. always recommend tile your oven, uh, tile around the oven before you do your render because then you can cut the tiles quite roughly and then just render down over the surface. We didn't have uh, that luxury the other day when we were building our oven, we needed to get the render on and so what we did was we put spaces in under the edge of the render uh, so that we could slide the tiles in underneath which is what you see behind me. Uh, so, tips for tiling. So the big tip of course is do it before you do your render. That's number one. Number two uh, is, hey, get some cardboard and create templates of your tiles in cardboard and then cut the pieces of cardboard to fit the various uh, areas around the oven because you've got some sort of complex shapes that you'll need to make and it's just easy to make them in cardboard first. The other tip I would give you is think about what you're going to do when you get to the edge of your stand. Uh, so let's say, for example, you've decided to uh, tile around the oven using, I don't know, maybe a, a flamed granite, like you know, 20 or 30 millimeters thick. Maybe it's got a, a coping, a bullnose on the edge, or even a, a dropped edge. You can then just bring that, you know, over the edge of your concrete stand, and that gives you a lovely finish on on this exposed edge. And we can then just render up underneath that or apply stone or whatever, tiles or whatever else you think you're doing on your stand. Um, if you're using, say, porcelain tiles like we are, they don't have a nice exposed edge. They're fairly sharp um, and they're not that attractive. Um, but you can buy this aluminium extrusion uh, with a tiling uh, edging material. Um, there's a whole heap of different profiles, uh, so 
to, you know, to suit various tile thicknesses and, and so on. And so what we've done is we've just got this edging and we've glued it down, just ordinary uh, like liquid nail adhesive. And I've deliberately hung it over the edge of the concrete slab by about a millimeter so that when I render this surface, I'll be rendering to this face. So it'll be, the render will come up just underneath this edge. And, uh, and then when it's all done, I'll have this nice, just this nice neat edge along here that's protecting the tiles, but also it's looking good. So this is the kind of thing I actually didn't really know about when I uh, built my first oven. I wasn't aware of this stuff. Uh, and it's really, really handy. So when you, if you think you're tiling, hey, go visit your tile store and have a chat with the guys down there and they'll tell you about the various different trims that they have uh, to suit you know, your particular uh, setup. If you've decided to put a crack control joint in your suspended concrete slab, uh, which is something that we recommend, then uh, I would recommend you tile up to each side of that because you know that there's going to be the tiniest, tiniest bit of uh, movement in this lab, it's going to, uh, we're going to have a tiny, tiny little crack, hairline crack forming in here. And so if we tile over the top of that, then we may find we get uh, a little hairline crack appearing in the tile. But if we tile up to either side of that, ah, now the, any movement will happen in between the tiles. So we've rendered our stand. Um, I've just used bagged acrylic render. Uh, you should be able to find it at a local hardware store. Basically, it's just a dry mix. You add water to it, mix it up, and then you apply it to your, your, your blocks, your bricks, or, and your, your concrete slab. Uh, and this is not a video to try and teach you how to render. To be honest, I am not a great renderer. Uh, it is an art form in of itself. And there's, again, some great videos out there on rendering brickwork and blockwork. Uh, you can watch uh, but I do want to just give you a couple of tips that are sort of specific to um, what we're doing one of the biggest tips uh, would be use some uh, corner material this probably has a technical name again not a professional renderer so I don't know what that is but it's uh, this basically this aluminium extrusion that you can put onto corners uh, and it gives you a nice hard edge that you can render along. And so you don't have to try and uh, render, you know, to a feather edge, uh, you can just render up to this and you'll get this nice dead straight edge set by this. The other beauty of this stuff is that if you do hit, uh, hit it with a piece of wood, it's quite tough. Uh, whereas if you just had render, you know, coming to a point, it's not, it's not particularly tough at all. Applying it's pretty easy. Just get some adhesive, liquid nails will do the job and you just, just glue it on. Uh, then you let that set and then you can come back and render up to it. Uh, so another tip, uh, if you've 
never done any rendering before, um, you put the render on, uh, don't try and get it perfect while it's wet. It's virtually impossible to do. It's again, the same thing as trying to say trowel wet concrete and get it completely flat and smooth. It's very, very difficult. But if you let it start to set, then you, you can come back and you can get it nice and flat. And you can actually use your float. Uh, I have uh, cleaned up our polystyrene float that came with the kit. And I can use the back face of this, because this is nice and flat, to block this surface. So this, uh, I, I trailed this render on uh, wet, um, and it was ugly as sin. Uh, and now I can, now that it's sort of started to set, I can come back and go over that surface just doing little swirling motions and it'll just knock off all the high spots and leave me with a relative, uh, relatively flat surface. The other tip I would say is don't worry about getting it perfect on the first coat. You can always come back and fill in holes later on. Just mix up another little, little batch and, and put it on. Because generally speaking, if you are doing a render like this, this is just a base coat and then you'll do something over the top. So this is our base coat just to hide all of our, uh, our joints between our blocks to give us a nice flat finish. We'll then come back over the top of this once it's set with a, a roll on render just to give it a color uh, and give it the sort of the, the look that we're after. Um, again, this is n by no means the only way of finishing your stand. This is just one way, uh, but it, it's a nice and simple way of making block work look good.